so Kane, I, I love the links that you're posting here. I want to just get your big picture analysis in the last couple weeks on Tucker's departure. You've been linking a lot to it. What are you seeing? What are you hearing? How should we think about this? Well, it's the defamation of Tucker Carlson. They're certainly trying. I caught the first 10 minutes of your, of your excellent open this morning talking about those text messages. Obviously, I saw that story on Drudge last night. He's going big with it. It's funny, you know, Drudge turns to the left, and now several years later, as some people would argue sooner, uh, Fox News is kind of is, is turning that way. Obviously, someone is, um, is coordinating some leaks here. There's a great town hall story that has four or five videos, quote unquote, leaked Tucker Carlson videos from a Media Matters reporter on Twitter. So that's, I would, I would tell people to look at that, but it's all backfiring because this sort of leaked audio stuff, leaked video from Tucker on, you know, on his set before broadcast or before uh, filming begins, they show that Tucker's a real guy. Um, regarding the, those texts, I'm with you 100%. They did not show Tucker Carlson as a racist. Let's ask Simon Ataba, the White House reporter who has been blacklisted by Karen Jean-Pierre. Ask him if he thinks Tucker's a racist. You know, you'll get a response that, that uh, Fox News won't like. And, you know, one other thing, a little birdie told me here recently that, um, well, this week, um, Lawrence Jones is filling in for Tucker at 8 p.m. By the way, you were correct to mention that the 8 p.m. slot on Fox News is down 50%. I just posted a story that the overall uh, MSNBC beat Fox News in primetime ratings two nights mm. ago. It's unbelievable. That hasn't happened in a while. I'll get back to the Lawrence Jones story. Just that, um, you know, there's some he, him pronouns thing happening there. And it, it, um, it just doesn't bode well for the future of Fox News. Outside Jesse Waters, Laura Ingram. And, and a few other fighters, that network isn't really worth a lot. Yeah, and so let, let's, let's dive into this. How does this, because so you're, you're one of the top media sites out there for conservative patriots and Americans. How do you think this changes the media landscape? Does it make it harder for us to be oh. able to penetrate you know, the narrative, does it make it easier for us? I mean, so that's the question. Is Tucker not on cable TV and more like Rogan? Does that allow us to reach a younger generation? Or does it actually make it harder for us to be able to crush these pre-existing orthodoxies? Your thoughts? Yeah, that's a good, uh, it's a good complex question. You know, I thought of the Rogan thing because there was a t quote from Tucker one night on his show. And he was like, you guys think my audience is big? Joe Rogan has 12 million yep. every day on Spotify. So I know there's a part of, of Tucker that probably has a little bit of a desire to, to go that alternate route and reach a younger audience. In terms of what it makes, you know, my first thought when you said, how does it make our job? I thought you were leaning into sort of us presenting news. And it, as a side note, it does make my job more difficult, right? Because let's say I have an outstanding clip from Fox News. Let's say it's you on Laura Ingram, or let's say it's Senator Johnson on Maria Bartiromo's show. Now, if I present that video, I get pushback from a certain part of my audience just mm. for showing it because it's from the Fox News platform. So um, now going back to the meat of your question, which is, does this, how does this affect our ability to reach the MAGA audience and reach maybe an independent Republican-leaning audience if we all leave Fox News, if we all stop watching? Um, well, it's, you know, it's going to hurt Fox's bottom line, number one. Um, their numbers are way down. I'm sure way that's, down. The yeah, that's, I'm sure that's a huge part of the reason for this panic, right? For this, this pushing out of text messages and Suzanne Scott leaking to the Wall Street Journal is because they're trying to recapture a part of their audience and say, look, we were the good guys. It was Tucker who was the bad guy. He was oh, the one who was, who was texting these things. I think and you're right, so, Kane. So, so long, I just make sure everyone understands that's, that's a super important point that you think that these leaks against Tucker is Fox's attempt to regain their audience? Do they really understand their audience, Kane? Is that, is that where they're we're desperate. at? Yeah, I yeah, mean. They're desperate. I didn't mean to cut you off in the middle of your question, but look, let's say you're Suzanne Scott and Lachlan Murdoch, and, and you think, oh, maybe we're going to lose 20%, you know, if we fire Tucker. They, they obviously had to be thinking about damage control. And now when they see down 50% in the 8 o'clock hour, and they see that MSNBC is beating them in overall primetime, 
Yeah, I would think that would push them to the panic stage, such as now they're just throwing anything and everything. And that's why I implied perhaps that there are even bedfellows with Media Matters. Like who's supplying these clips to Media Matters, these quote unquote gotcha clips on Tucker? It's got to be inside people at, at Fox yes. because so, yeah, so I think that Fox News is desperate. They're putting this out to try to get, you know, just to try to people get people to see their side. And it's not working. So that that's a that's a new point that I have not heard anybody make. And quite honestly, Kane, I was making somewhat of the opposite point, which also they actually could both be true. I was saying they might want to take Tucker out. You're actually saying they're trying to rewind the narrative to the audience. Like, hey, guys, you would have fired him, too. But it's just this fundamental misunderstanding of who their audience actually is. They think they're going to regain the audience based on that text message or a couple of off-the-cuff remarks. It's the opposite. It makes people angrier at Fox, Kane, doesn't it? Yeah, it, it, from our base, without a doubt, it pisses people off. We see through it. We're the smarter consumers of media. But I think Fox, you know, assumes a general dumbed-down um, – you know, I don't think they have a high opinion of the intelligence of the American people. And I think or their grasping, audience, obviously. <laughs> yeah. I mean, I think they're grasping at straws. I tried to put that part in there. Like, I, I, I think they're panicked because it instead of being a 20 percent drop in ratings, it's 50 percent. So they you know, they're they're And the other part, too, is they might be trying to maybe they're really still pissed at Tucker and they're they're upset that he's getting this much positive attention. So they're just trying to bring down his, you know, bring down his reputation, help destroy him a little bit. So he perhaps doesn't get the hundred million dollar contract that he was offered yesterday. But I agree with your point. I don't think our points are, are conflicting. Um, you know, I don't really think they're opposite. I think that Fox is just, they're beyond the misinterpreting stage and they're in the panic stage. When you get panicked about things, you just start throwing things That's against exactly the wall. That's exactly right. You never make a good decision when you're in the midst of panic, ever, in life. That's why you yeah. need to slow down and you need to use prudence and not hysteria. And so basically, they're seeing the ratings fall. They're seeing, I mean, not just fall, collapse, down 60 or 70%. They're seeing massive audience erosion that seems to only be accelerating the more information gets out. And probably somebody says, hey, we need to try to tell the audience why we did this without doing that. And so someone has the, the genius idea to leak a text message to the New York Times. I mean, and we're also learning, Kane, that Fox has full-time people, four full-time people at Fox that collect dossiers on their talent. I don't know if that's true, but it sounds like it's true. And then they're working in harmony with Media Matters. I mean, Kane, what, what, in the 30 seconds, and we'll talk about this after the break, if you were Fox, I think the only way you could save this right now is not try to leak stuff on Tucker is go take your golf stream down to Tucker's home in Florida or up in Maine and offer him a hundred million a year and try to sweep this under the rug. I don't think they can survive if they don't resign Tucker. Your thoughts, Kane? Yeah. Well, first I'm going to have to look up that story you just mentioned about four Fox spies. That would not surprise me at all. And, and um, uh, yeah, you know, the rehiring of Tucker he would probably laugh at them at this point. I know you're going to break, so so I'll save my big response for after the break. No, please do. I, I, I'm sure he would laugh at them, but I'm saying that the only strategic move Fox has left to save the network, and maybe they want to be RNC TV. I don't know. I'm not under. I'm, I'm not quite understanding the philosophy or the thought here. Maybe they just want to truncate the network and go down to 800,000 people instead of 3.3 million. And okay, Rupert Murdoch will be worth eight billion instead of 18 billion. But maybe no more lawsuits, and you get to go back to the Met Gala, and no more boycotts, and Dylan Mulvaney can do ads for you again. 